Last time on Lapforge. What the heck? <laughs> and now. So today we're making a buffer sword. Now I'm gonna give you my version of it. The way I see a buffer sword is sort of as a beginner weapon. And it needs to be made out of cheap material, it needs to be made out of easy material. Meaning it's, it needs to be easy to find and it also needs to look good. Now the first sword you build will look as shit. Mine did, everybody else's did. I, I can actually show you one of my first swords. As you can see, this is more like a cricket bat. And that's actually what, sh what we call it, the cricket bat. And it ain't exactly pretty, but it got the job done. It's not a, what you would call a traditional buffer sword, but it's what I call a beginner sword, or my version of a buffer sword. So, what do we need for this build of a buffer sword? Now, as with the other sword I made last summer, the first thing we're gonna need is some foam. Both of them are sleeping from sleeping pads that you use for camping. And you can get this really cheap foam here, which if you press it down, it don't come out that easily. It's really bad for this type of use. Now this here is much, much better. It's a little figure, just a tip, like I said in the other video. The more dense the foam is, meaning the less um, you can actually make marks in it and the more it, the faster it pops out, the better the foam is. Then we're gonna need a core and for our buffer saw we're gonna use bamboo sticks. Then we're gonna need something to stick it together with. I'm gonna use double-sided tape. Now you could use glue but I'm not say double-sided tape it's easier. It's easier to work with and if you're a younger kid or is a parent or is working with a lot of kids, double-sided tape is still, in my experience, the easier material to work with. And you don't have to worry about it getting on the clothes and everything. To cover everything up, we're gonna need some silver duct tape, everybody's favorite. And then we're gonna need some scrap leather for the handles. Now, uh, shall we begin? Now, the first thing we're gonna do is to cut out the foam. So I'm gonna lay down a piece of the wood here on top of them so I don't cut my floor. And then I'm gonna take my foam here. And I should probably mention that this build here is gonna be a three layer build, just like the latex sword I made last summer. This means that we're not gonna use foam noodles. We're not gonna wrap it around in any special type of way. We're just gonna build it up in three layers. Now, I already gone ahead and cut out my core or uh, my um, bamboo here in the right length I want them. So I'm just gonna put it on and I can see that it fits kind of well with the width of this foam. So, and then I'm just gonna mark out where one side of this foam is gonna be. Then where is the middle going to be around here? And keep in mind that you need a couple of uh, at least around five centimeters at the top for uh, say for safety when you if you accidentally point uh, if you accidentally stab somebody with a sword. I have marked one side. A bamboo is not straight all the way, but I'm gonna go for it anyway. Fine. So now I mark that out, and I have around I have well over a centimeter on each side of this. That's because I want both bamboo sticks here as my core. How much space do I have? I still have like a centimeter on each side. That's fine. I would rather make it too large than too small. If I make it too small, it, I can't undo it. Make it too large, I can always cut something off. 
Be sure to use a very sharp X-Acto knife for this. Preferably uh, use an entirely new blade on each sword. It's gonna give you the best result. Here's our first layer. Now we just need two more of these. Now I have three layers. It seems to fit rather nicely. Let's take the middle layer. Mag up for our cores. To make this a little easier for ourselves, you're gonna duct tape the cores together. So I can see here is our core. This here is the handle. And here we have the sword. So or the core of the sword. So this here seems nice. About five centimeters to the top. And I can actually, since it's this type, it's the cheap type of foam, I can actually press it down into the foam. And we have a mark that I can mug out, mug up. And just put these away and cut out. Here's the middle. And here we have the two others. And here's the middle of that one. Now we're not gonna throw this one away yet. We're gonna save this one for later. Let's take the lower part. Now we're gonna start gluing them together. So let's well, not gluing them, but taping them together. So now the less tape you're gonna use here, the lighter it's gonna be, and the less hard it's gonna be. So try to see if you can use as little tape as possible. It's not really, uh, on the inside, it's not that big an issue since it will get sort of beaten out of it over time. I'm gonna put the middle one on. If you're two persons, this is much easier. Now we need to put the core in. Now before we do that, I am gonna make a very primitive secure thing here, a secure stabbing thing. This here is from the middle over here. I'm just gonna put it here and then the duct tape I took I'm gonna roll it around now it won't if you step with it it won't easy break through the duct tape this or this here need to put duct tape on the other end as well now we can cover it in double sided tape Let's take our middle here and let's put this inside. Now we cover this part up with some more double-sided tape. So here we have it. Now we'll need to put this part on. Basically have our sword. Probably see that it has some sort of shape right now. Now, the handle is still covered in uh, tape right now. We're not gonna do anything about that. We're gonna instead we're gonna take our exacto knife, which at the moment is covered in glue, so it might not do us any good taking the blade. Another thing is that if you want to save a little on your blade, you can use some. Uh, I read that you can use some machine oil from or a sewing machine let's cut this here first and then let's uh, mark out the shape later uh, afterwards and it doesn't matter if you somehow tear off the double-sided tape down here we're gonna cover this later anyway so now we need to make the basic shape first of all 
this here needs to be a v I want this to be a really basic sword. So just a basic sword shape, you know, straight or as straight as you can get, get it. And it will probably be best if I cut this out first and then start cutting up here where I want to be pointy later. Now this has almost straight down there. I need to do it on the other side and I'm gonna apply a little machine oil. Now we have a square sword. So let's cut the shape of the let's cut start cutting the shape of the end up here. It's gonna be let's see where is there it is. This here's where it's the end of the core is. And this here's the end of the sword. So say around here would be a good spot. So here is the square sword. And we can probably stop here and start making uh, the handle. And I actually think I am. Um, and then I'm gonna come back to this part. The handle. Let's cover it up in double-sided tape. Now we're going to take this, which is the middle from the core, from the middle part of the foam, of these three layers. I'm going to use this for the handle, but first we need this part here. And I'm going to take this, which is some extra foam from the sleeping pad I just had laying around. And I'm going to cut this out. I'm going to take the other part and I'm just going to put this on. Now now we're going to take the middle part from this. I'm going to go around here. And then just keep going around. This here is a trick. I learned it's a way of making easy and cheap swords. Uh, easy and cheap uh, handles. And it's a way of saving a little of your foam by making a really cool looking handle it looks like it's wrapped around like this now for the end down here i'm gonna cut out a little piece i have here now we actually have a sword we actually have a sword right now you just need to cover it up in duct tape but i'm not totally satisfied yet I want one more thing, and this is not something you usually see on buffer weapons. I would like to make an edge on this. It's not something you do on a buffer sword normally, but I'm gonna do it because it's one of the hardest thing I find to make, and it's something I would really like to show because if you do it on this type of uh, duct tape weapons, or this type of buffer weapons, it's a really good place to start learning it. Might not want to do it on the first sword you're making, but on later on, trust me, when you start and want to do this a little more, it's gonna be a lot more fun if you know how to do it. Mark out where I want my edge to be here on the inside, around. If I can do this out in one, it's the best. So, but as you can see, it's a hard thing to do. This here is actually not a very nice edge, but it's okay. Maybe I should uh, I should probably change this to another blade. Looks like it. Now we don't get a sharp edge here. If you want to, you can cut it so you do. I'm not that fond of uh, having a sharp edge, especially when you're making a duct tape uh, weapon, because when you're putting duct tape on, you're gonna get a hard duct tape edge. Now I only need to make it out here. So, I'm oh yeah, finished with using knives. Now we need to make 
our sword look like it's made out of metal. But before we do that, it's a good thing to check if the sword is actually soft enough. So maybe go out and hit somebody. It should stick together right now. The only thing it's gonna need is the cover up. So once you have checked it, grab your duct tape and let's start covering up. Now this here is where people get it wrong. Because a lot of people would start doing this, wrapping the duct tape around. Taking out the duct tape and start wrapping it around this way. You're not, you're supposed to put it this way. So it follows the sword, follows the edge. With this, doing it like this, you'll get a sword that's covered and it's going to stick it's going to stick together and it's still going to be soft and it's going to look a lot better. Now, let's do the other side. Here it's actually when it comes to covering this and duct tape it's actually best to use as little as possible. The more duct tape you're going to use, the more the harder the sword is going to be and the more heavy the sword is going to be. Now the heavier it is, it might be a better practice sword, but not gonna be a good sword for LARPing, which is what you're probably are going for. Now you could cover this up in brown tape. I'm, not, I'm gonna cover it up in leather just to make it a little nicer. So now this here is covered in double-sided tape. Now we take our leather, put it on here. So here it is, the final buffer sword. It's what I would call a basic buffer sword. They look, in my opinion, a lot better and hold up a lot more than the, the round ones with the foam insulation on. The only thing in this, I would say, that ho that's holding it back from lasting uh, five years is probably because it has a bamboo core. At some point that will break, but if you have a PVC pipe as a core or glass fiber as a core, it would hold up a lot better. Now, if you will excuse me, I need to go kill the skeleton. At least fight him off. Who the heck are you guys? We're the, the Kills, Kills dumb shit. shit.